Hello everyone, what's up? This is Rich, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the new Windows Live Mail client. If we go to the website get.live.com, you can choose Get Windows Live at the bottom, big orange button, and click Install. What will happen is that it will uh, prompt you to download an executable file, and this is okay. I've tested it. It's fine. You save it, and then uh, I have it here in my desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and double-click it. And then it says, to begin installing, please accept the terms of use, and you hit accept. And then we can uncheck these three options. Well, actually, I do check off the option for help improve Windows Live, but I don't do the uh, MSN Home or the Live Search, because I use Google for that stuff. I hit install, and then what we'll do is think about it for a bit, and then bring up please wait while it gets installed. Now I already have the writer and mail installed but to install it all you have to do is check off the one you want down here. If it wasn't installed you check off mail and hit close and then start it. It puts an icon on the desktop which is called Windows Live Mail right here and then you launch it. Now after you've launched it you're in the mail client here you'll notice that I actually have a live.com ID. Uh, if you don't have one that's okay you can sign up one for free or if you have a hotmail.com email address already even if you don't use it you can use it to sign in to the uh, to the live client which is fine now I don't have currently any uh, anything no mail clients installed in this thing so I'm gonna show you some quick things first first of all this is what the default mail client looks like uh, what I do is I hit this button right here for show menu and I have show all menus. What this will do is bring up file edit view tools, actions and help at the top. Now before I continue if you're wondering isn't this just Outlook Express in a new skin? To be honest yeah if you know Outlook Express you'll be very familiar with this so what I do is I click on tools and then accounts and uh, oh actually let me do this the Windows Live way I'll just hit add an email account instead. Now the first thing I'm going to do is add in my live.com email address which is frostedside at live.com and then put in my password and then put my display name which is myself and there's an option to manually configure server settings for an email account if it's hotmail or live.com or msn.com I believe too uh, you don't need to do this and hit next and then hit finish and what it will do is that it names it live and uh, then it says welcome excuse me Windows Live Hotmail member services it's a welcome wagon email type of thing and it puts in all your stuff now the coolest thing about using this compared to say the website way of doing it is if I hit a new uh, email message and uh, let's just say I'll write a message to myself and say hello this is a test mail and then type in hello this is a test mail and hit send let me just do a send receive here so I get it there it is you'll notice that there is no tagline ads they're not there that's awesome because normally when you send out mail using hotmail or live.com they put these ads at the bottom of they uh, append them to the bottom of emails. It doesn't do that when you use the live client and that is cool. Now you may be asking, well maybe I don't use live.com or hotmail.com. Can I use IMAP? Can I use POP3 accounts? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll do add an email account and what I'll do is I'll add my Gmail account in here and put in my password and put in my display name and then I will check off manually configure server settings for this account on this one and hit next and it's going to ask me my incoming mail server is a what? POP3, IMAP, or HTTP? It's IMAP in this case. So IMAP.gmail.com to server requires a secure connection. In Gmail? Yes it does. Changes the port to 993. That's correct. The login ID is the Gmail email address. The outgoing server is smtp.gmail.com. The port is uh, requires SSL. We'll check that off. And I'll change the port number to 465. Oops, I type that right. And uh, that's what you need to do. And my outgoing server requires authentication. Yes, it does. Because Gmail needs to do that. And hit next. And uh, then it says you have successfully entered information required to set up your account. 
you can set it as default if you want hit finish and then what it will do is uh, go out and subscribe to the IMAP folders on the Gmail account now what I'm going to do is just hit OK and then I'm going to change this because when you have a Gmail account in here it makes this Gmail folder with all this stuff and uh, it's incorrect so I'm going to change that what I do is I go and I right click and then I left click properties and then what I do for the Gmail properties I go to the IMAP part of it and the root folder path I put in br left bracket Gmail right bracket just like that and then for the special folders the sent items uh, path is actually will change this to sent mail draft path is drafts deleted items path is trash just like that and the junk path is spam because this is what it's called in Gmail so we'll make them one and the same so that when we drag messages to these folders or delete them out of there or whatever it will uh, not just arbitrarily create new IMAP folders and we'll hit apply and OK and then I'll say you've made some changes that may affect your list would you like to refresh well yes I would it goes and downloads the folders and now that's proper we have inbox draft some mail spam trash all mail and starred uh, what we can do is right click one more time and go to IMAP folders and we can just double click the starred folder to get rid of it because we essentially don't need it at this point and then hit OK and then the start folder is gone now you'll notice that I have my live.com email address here I have my gmail account here and you'll notice it's a different color well I can right click this and set the color to red orange yellow green blue purple or fuchsia so I will set the live.com to blue changes it to blue folders and gmail I will change that to green now I got green folders on the Gmail side. It's nice that you're able to do this in the live client because you can easily separate one from the other. You'll also notice that there's little arrows. If I click this, I can make the menus uh, shrink up if I want to. Pretty cool. Not bad at all. Uh, if you want to mess around with this a little more, you can go to tools and then go to accounts. And there is some other, this looks different from Outlook Express, but it same, essentially acts the same way. So for example, if I want to modify my Gmail settings, I uh, hit this and then I go to properties. And as you see from here, this looks very, very much like Outlook Express 6. And because uh, essentially it's the same thing. And I uh, hit servers, I can change this, uh, I can go to connection, I can do advanced properties for my uh, servers incoming out going. I can set my server timeouts here if I want to. On IMAP, you might want to change this to longer than one minute because it does that by default. And the IMAP thing, we saw this a second ago. You can modify that too. Uh, this also does news group accounts. It does everything Outlook Express did, and it has a couple more IMAP options, which is good. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, just it may be a little frilly thing, but I kind of like it. Is you can change the entire uh, color of the client if you want to. So if I go to dark gray, now it changes it to a dark gray. And even though this is in Windows XP, yes, it does have a Vista-ish look to it. So uh, yeah. You're going to have to deal with that. Whether you like their hate, I really don't have too much choice. But being that the client is free, I guess we really don't have too much to complain about. Uh, managing mail is easy. Finding mail is easy. Um, I'd say the only knock I have against it is that you have to have a live.com or a hotmail.com ID in order to use it. But being that the ID is free, it's really not a big deal. And yes, you can switch IDs here. You can sign in the messenger if you use the MSN client. Uh, you can change the sign-in ID if you use a different Windows thing, so you can use that too. So uh, I, I think it's pretty cool. If you liked Outlook Express, you'll really dig this. Uh, I think it works out pretty well. Make sure you go and do the show all menus thing, though, so you can see these uh, things at the top here. Like I said, and if you've used Outlook Express at all, uh, you'll be good to go with this very, very quickly. And that's it. It's free. Get.live.com. Try it out. Uh, and in some instances, I got to say, it acts actually a little better than Mozilla Thunderbird. So uh, think about that. Take it easy.